Good afternoon there gentlemen, it's Gregor here again. I've got a couple of unboxings to do over the next few days. Um, so I'll start off with this one, oops, excuse me, at the moment and then uh, we'll try and get one every other day. I've got quite a few to do. A lot of them from GeroDesign.com for their new diorama bases which uh, I've just had a quick look through when I, when I received them and I have to say the quality is, is excellent but we'll, we'll go through each box and uh, I'll show you what's in each box. So well, first we start off with is a sorry about getting these uh, gun barrels off here little ones for the battleship. Um, is is a new main chieftain, which was kindly bought for me by my daughter Charlotte Ann Riley. Thank you, Charlotte. So as you can see, it's a brand new kit by Meng. It's the Chieftain Mark Ten. Lovely box work. I love that. I love this camo. I really do like this camo. When I do get round to building, it's got to be that camo, isn't it? Jet Berlin camel. Yeah, so it's a Menkit as I said, 135 scale. It says it has um, the breakdown of steel brew, composite armor, follows in its installation of the real vehicle. The gun mantle covered gun barrel thermal sleeve is designed by digital sculpting. Infrared searching, so infrared searchlight as internal construction. The horizontal spring suspension and shock absorbers are accurately replica replicated. Oh, uh, is it blah, 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 about kids? Clear lights, parts, uh, PE fine parts, and two paint schemes are very, but obviously I'll be doing this one. So, box art is, like I say, is really nice. And same on the other end. And the uh, and the model kit number is TS0, sorry, dash 051, which is, uh, sorry, too far up there. And again, on that side, on this side, we have one version. It's all MIG AK paints. I do have quite a few AK paints, so touch wood, I can use most of what I've got. If not, I'll just have to mix them from other ones. And on this side, a bit of information about it. If you want to uh, read it, so I'll bring it down a bit, pause it there. And then we have another view of the Chieftain, it looks, like, it looks almost like a winter camouflage doesn't it? And what colour is that? Is it grey? Is it grey? Is it just the actual... Oh, that's just like a um, CAD drawing isn't it? Right, so yeah, so let's have a look what's in the box. I haven't opened it, I kept it for this special occasion so I don't know what's in the box. So here we go. It's tightly packed. lid down there and let's take that off again I did enter this competition with my um, Sherman you know the uh, first in Bastogne but didn't do anything so I'm going to enter the Panther since that was a men kit so I've got to do some nice pictures of it first so let's get myself a, a knife and we'll go bit by bit as I normally do I need a bigger desk Bags in. Right, first of all, we look like we have uh, sponsor, sorry, the side armor, side plates, drive sprocket, uh, sorry, drive, uh, final drive, looks like suspension parts, and the side skirt, side, sides, the yeah, sponsors, I suppose they are. All nicely detailed, even the uh, conduit wiring's uh, on there as well, which is a nice touch. Nice crisp, nice and crisp. Well, you expect to be, it's a brand new kit. Really nicely done, and see there's no ugly sink marks. We're going to see them on the back there, but these are going to be covered up anyhow. You're never going to see these, but you can still fill them if you want to. And same with these, they're never going to be seen, because you can fill them if you want, or cover them in mud, whichever. You're not going to see them. But as you can see, the detail and the sculpting of the parts is is to Meng's, Meng's normal standard, which is high. I don't know if these in real life. I'll have to find out if they were if they were individual plates by looking at it. They probably were. So when I probably build, I might just leave, you know, so you can see the suspension and the work that you've done underneath it. Seems a shame just to cover it all up. 
like I did on the Panther because it seemed to shave just to waste all your time making the um, doing all the low hull and tracks and then you can't see them so that's what I'll probably do with this one I do eventually build it right and the next part here we have with all the running gear and it looks like all the rubber is uh, separate which is great makes our life a lot easier and we don't need any uh, masks and again really nice detail the wheels look brilliant they really do nicely sculpted nicely finished as well I do like working with grey plastic it is my favourite colour to work with Oh, yep, again, you see the wheel detail. This is my daft cat. He's playing, makes these strange noises. And again, there we are, I've got the detail on those. Really, really nice. And again, I say we've got all the uh, rubbers for the tyres, which will be painted separately. We've got the uh, return, so idler wheel, more suspension parts, and sprocket obviously and return roller wheels at the top as well there we have all those oh, everything's you know everything's there and nicely the same as two sprues like that so there's plenty plenty to keep us going with him part wise and you know all nicely all nicely done really nicely done and then we have the lower hull sorry the lower turret and the barrel And again, yeah, really nice. That's part of the, uh, yeah, I like that. Got a nice, it's got a texture on there as well. Some more wiring conduit. Obviously, we have the barrel, which really does look nice. I know it's in two parts, but neither here nor there. Just take your time with it, that's all you do, isn't it? Really, really nice. And I say, we'll start off with this little bit of conduit on the, see that, and a bit of texture we've got on the uh, lower part of the turret. That looks really nice and obviously we have the uh, low turret which is uh, okay and then say I've got the barrel the barrel is really nicely done really really is that's lovely the quality on that is superb I like that I do like that so just take your time with it and uh, You'll get there. Oh, there's a bit here as well. Sorry, it came out. We've got the uh, kind of rubber mantle as well. So you can see that part. That's rubber. You see it's canvas cover for the uh, the gun. Which is a nice touch again. I should just put, I'll put that back in the bag. There's no me I'll lose it. Uh, what we got here, we have looks like uh, tool boxes and things like that. And more suspension parts. There's two screws the same. So let's get the one, obviously. Uh, it looks like part of the exhaust. Even the small details are really are fine. I have to be very careful when you take these off the uh, sprue. The fire extinguishers. I presume that's a light guard. Storage boxes. Uh, yeah, some really fine parts. I've got the handles on this side. How fine they are. It's got nice detail again. I say there's no flash. I wouldn't expect. I say I wouldn't expect to find any flash on a new kit, new tool kit. Molds to be crisp and new. So, so it got quite fine. That's quite fine for plastic. That on the and the um, lights. I presume it is. I'll have a look. I'll compare it to the PE parts that I've got on my shelf coin. See how see what the difference is, if there's much. But yeah, the storage boxes along the sides. More bits and bobs, I have part for the suspension again. So there's two sprues like that, so just be careful when you're uh, taking them off, fine parts off the sprue. I won't take this, no, I'll have to because it's got bits in it for the, uh, I thought it was a separate bag of it. Be careful. We obviously have two sprues for the um, tracks, which are the track pins. You know, that's what all I can really say is, yeah, track pins. But obviously, when you cut these off, just have to cut them off there and there and there. 
and these are spaced perfectly to go straight into the track so you can go one, two, three, four, five, six tracks in one bit. Fairly straightforward really, I do like building them like this. Excuse me. And they're easy to make, just you know, we'll show the tracks when we get to them. Wow, this is nice and, nice and fine as well. It's got that lovely texture on it as well. On the uh, hatches and bits and bobs. Commander's cupola. Really, really crisp detail. And the lights are really nice. Not just blobs of the lights, and you can actually see the actual bracket, which looks really tasty. And the end of the barrel, which is rifled. I never realised that until I've just seen it now. Which I'll start off with. Where my thumb is there. If I can get the camera to see the sides, it's rifled. So it goes on the end of the barrel, which is a nice touch. And you see all the fine detail on the touches, the uh, little the texture on them there as well, the fine handles, I'd say be careful with them. And I've got the commander's cupola there. And some other bits and bobs. Small fine parts again. And see about the light and um, where we are. You can see the detail on the, uh, the light, it's got a nice bracket. Take a little bit of cleaning up, not much, but uh, yeah. Really nice, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Smoke, smoke launchers there as well. Ooh, really, that was a really fine part of that. Look at that thing, I think that must be for the aerial. See that bit where my finger is? Looks like part of the aerial, that's really fine. Be careful when we're taking that off as well. Right, I'll pop those back in the aerial bag. Right, we'll do the tracks which come in a resealable bag, I suppose. No, they're not the resealable. Never mind. I'll just take one out and we'll have a look at them. Just one point each time to um, I've got a little yeah, I've got sink marks in them, but there again the wheels are gonna cover most of them and they're risen as well, so just a couple of wisps of a file and they've gone anyhow. But the detail is nice and you've got the actual plates on the back, the rubber pads on the back as well, built on which is nice. Nice detailed track, and so we can see the sink marks just uh, look, come out quite easy, just with a whisper file, so it's not going to be a problem. Right, I don't want to lose any of those, so what I might do is I'll staple those myself, I'll be stapling after. And then we have the upper turret, which looks lovely again, and they say the detail is. You know, the staples can't get them. Been, I think they've been at the Tamiya School of Stapling. Wow, that's really nice again. The welding is, <laughs> is lovely. I don't care who you are, I don't think them world seams need to be done again or improved. I think they're adequate, or more than adequate. We really are more conduit wiring again, presumably for the searchlight. And again, we've got that lovely texture on the turret as well, and the details. On the side there, you've got that nice bit of conduit again, which is nice to see. You can see the difference between the... I presume, I don't know if it's cast or not, I don't know what it is. Or rolled steel, or... I really don't know. It's got a nice texture on there as well. I say the weld seams are lovely, but the weld seams on there, there's no need to alter anything at all. But that's really nicely done. Really nicely done that. Very impressive. Right, some more plastic yet. Yeah. And now we have the uh, blow and upper hull together in the bag. And again, let's have a look what we've got. Nice shape, no, in quite a weird shape, but uh, step. It's got. Um, Strengthen and blitzing there so it's uh, kept square, which is nice. Not much detail on the bottom, but probably on what you need. Not really going to see any of it. Got a lovely weld seam right down the centre. Again, and then on the front you've got all the parts for the uh, toy knives and things like that. All the bits and bobs. And nothing on the reverse, obviously. 
I've got some rubber, which is nice to I like to use track of the wheels with the uh, poly grip, poly grips. Where they are? Poly caps, not poly grips. Um, yes, yeah, makes it a lot easier when you're doing your wheels. You can pull them off and on. You know, when you even on a ped, you can put them on, test your tracks on them if uh, you built them by then, and then take them off again and paint them. Yeah, got the working springs for the suspension. There's four in there. Well, there's two, four, there's six in there actually, and four. It's all they're in together. We've got those. Oh, oh, bloody hell. The cast texture, yeah, because it's got the casting number on the front. Obviously, finer casting that you, that you get on a, a Russian vehicle or even Second World War uh, American stuff. It's got a nice, it looks nice. You really just see the front end. And it's got the casting number on there just above the driver's hatch. Again, the detail is lovely on there. And the engine deck. That's really nice, isn't it? Really, really nice. Even the filler caps. They're, not, they're actually on, but look at the detail on them. They look really nice. Really, really nice. You know, I do like the shape of the Chief, and even a, a lot of the modern tanks aren't as nicely shaped as the Chieftain. It's quite a powerful tank in its day, it's what well, it still is. If you, uh, you know, you wouldn't want to come across one. But uh, I do like the shape, so I think it's a, a lovely shape. Considering the age of the vehicle, you know, I think it was in the 60s or 70s, was it late, early 70s he came in. I'm not 100% sure, I'll have to check on that. But, you know, it's... The shape is there, a really nice shape. And there's some more bits and bobs, like we have the uh, turret basket, and a little bit of wiring. Well, these are nice parts as well. Presumably, these are all for the turret, the box on the side. And again, the detail is crisp, fresh, and nice. Really nice thing, even the, the thinness of the basket at the back as well. That's quite nice and see a big long. I have to be careful again when I'm putting this back in the plastic as well. Uh, we don't want to be snapping that. Again, all nicely detailed. Again, you, you can't you can't argue with that at all. You really can't. The quality, Manx quality is 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 only I think surpassed by Ryfield. But I do like men kits. I do like men kits as well. I do have to say. This is the last of the plastic. We have scared uh, scared. the clear parts. Hmm. We do have the clear parts in here and the track jig as well. Oh. Leave them in the plastic. The lenses for the uh, searchlight. You got the periscopes, all the little bits and pieces, and safely. That's for the tracks, obviously, to put together. And how clear they are. Even though you can put the plastic on. Sorry about the glare, but you can see that, can't you? That's really nice, isn't it? For the searchlight. You know, got a mirror on it, isn't it? Really nice. Crystal clear. Crystal clear. Yeah. No distortion and nothing. Brilliant. I'll put that back over there actually with another delicate part. And then we have the turret ring, so the rear, uh, other bits and bobs, more sto uh, storage boxes, other bits and bobs. We've got the rear there, which has got the conduit again for the wiring. Nice detail again. Then we just have a couple of storage boxes, the turret ring. Other bits and pieces, but again, all crisply and nicely molded. Really nice. Yeah, and it's got the proper. I like the ones that lock on like that. I must have made the lock on properly. I don't like a squeeze fit too much. Um, but yeah, impressive man. Really impressed with this kit. And we have some PE and decals, which are not going to be a lot on a on a on a uh, armored vehicle. We have registration plates and the uh, safety things on the front of the rear and front. A couple of little bits and pieces. We have, looks like a red cross on a white background, so maybe like a medical kit. OK, 
can't really tell anything. I'm going to take this out of the bag. Uh, and then we have the PE, which is quite nice, very thin for the engine deck. So everything's covered, so it'll be nice. And how thin that is. <laughs> and so the decals there, you, you, you're not going to get a mass of decals on armor kits, but what looks there, I've never had any problems with Meng's uh, decals either. Everything I've built so far, Panther, which was a, yeah, it was a Meng kit. No, that was a, was it? No, it was a Ryfield kit, wasn't it? Was it? No, it was a Menke. I can't remember now. It was a Menke. Of course it was a Menke. And then the, uh, the Jumbo before that was a Menke. So, yeah. So, they're nice. Done. And we have, as we usually get now with Men, we get a bit of literature in... Is it... In different language. We put them into a, a binder, a folder. So we've got the actual... Um, Holes printed out, put out. Sorry, there you can. And what's it? He says you got it in. You got it in. Of the Chinese, Japanese, and then we have it in English as well. So, and obviously more sort of Asian writing. And again, Russia. You've got Russian by the looks of it, and yeah, Russian. And then we have a. That's nice. I like that. That's nice, see? You can almost frame that, could you? Put that in a nice frame. That looks nice. That looks like I could even, you know, you could even put that, make a little day or, or something, and strengthen that and have it behind it of the tank as well, couldn't you? So you can see what, uh, if anybody asks you anything, what they are, they can just look. I might do that. They're on both sides. We've got that one side there. And then we have the opposite side there, on the rear. I like that. I like that, man. That's really nice. I'm going to check the other one, see if they've got any um, pullouts again on the, uh, the Panther is done. Wherever I put the paper. That's probably still in the box. Yeah, it's still in the box. And then we have one of the most important parts is the, is the destructions. Again, got a nice shiny paper from Meng. It's a fairly hefty book. Um, yep, yeah. just a picture of the tank on the front again from there, and just Meng's emblem on the back. First page we have the uh, usual do's and don'ts and what the symbols are for. And as normal with usual with um, armor kits, we start off with the wheels. But the first part is you've got part you've got to build A or B. In my case, I'll be building A. So obviously you have to uh, read the instructions uh, closely to see what parts are not going on what, what vehicle. So we start off with the wheels. I'll probably build the wheels, but I wouldn't add the pla I wouldn't add the um, rubber onto them yet. Uh, until at a later point, once they've been painted, more than likely, and they're all added together. And again, the suspension with the springs. Again, I like how the model companies now are uh, doing different colours, and then we have the sub build there in a different colour, which is which is nice. And then obviously, the spring goes in in there, and there's two parts that lock together with the spring. And again, building. Suspension again, it's all suspension down here. Again, all the same things on there, and then again, we still have on the other side, probably doing side A and side B. Is it? Yeah, left hand suspension, air suspension, air suspension, air suspension, just making sure. And then we start, that's all, all up to there, it's air suspension, and then we have a B suspension on here. So let's keep an eye out for things like that. Read every part as you're going along, and there we finish up. Yeah, that's all done. That's B again, B again, and B again. And then we start off with the lower hull, adding some parts of the lower hull, which is fairly straightforward, nothing different on there. And again, we're adding the final drive and some other bits and bobs to the front. That's the um, idler wheel. Yeah, so it's, yeah, you could be able to adjust it if you need to, I suppose. It looks like you can. There's a pin on there that locks in, but you can nip that pin off if you want and just use a bit of super glue and that or a bit of uh, Tamiya clear when you've got your tracks onto the right tension. Although they're live tracks anyhow, so they are quite uh, tensioned anyhow. And again, we're starting off with the hull again, adding, adding the uh, storage boxes, the searchlight, the clear glass, which I wouldn't be putting in at that point yet. We've got the uh, Light guards, lights, and again, all working on the upper hull. 
again like a splash guard on there as well and then we still on there again we got the oh that's a splash guard I presume that is I don't know what I thought it was this is all the same in here all this is the same attaching bits and bobs and we got the lower turret ring which goes in there which I thought would have gone into the turret but no never mind yeah, carrying on again with the PE grills and little grab handles have to go on there so we're all fine onto the um, engine deck and some various very small parts B30 you can see those that needs to go on and again we're still all the same at the moment still storage boxes and then connecting the upper hull and lower hull together and then we're putting the rear and then we're starting to build up the exhaust system at the back it's quite chunky but there's only a little bit of pipe hanging out so it'll be nice to weather a bit of that because it is unusual fuel the chief and had a mixture of different fuels he could use I think if I'm not mistaken um, I could run on petrol, diesel, I think it could run on something else as well I'm not 100% sure I knew it was uh, but the engine wasn't a complete success that was the only downfall of the chief and I think was the engine um, yeah, we're going to be attaching the uh, exhaust system to the back and we're starting off with the sponsoring sides with the details going on there, mirrors, and which I won't put on that point because I can guarantee it'll be knocked off straight away storage boxes, little bits and pieces and they're all, they're all both the same as well and we're doing the other side as well which is just the same but the reverse again then we add that to the side of the hull and with some more storage boxes, oh, these are the um, medical kits I was saying about with the decal there so you take and do two one millimeter holes I won't put the decals on until it's painted obviously again and then we had the tow cable uh, the, that is the medical box obviously on the back and again there's two of those one for each side Yep, and then all one for each side again everything's just the same and then we're attaching the suspension that's been pre-built in the early back to the lower hull and again the wheels we'll put them on but obviously we're not going to glue them on because we've got the poly cap so I'll probably go on at that point and then uh, we can see how they, how they fit with the tracks as there which is the next piece so yeah they're straightforward to build they really are they're nice and easy to build just take your time I do like building uh, individual link tracks I find it quite therapeutic, put somewhere on to listen to and away you go and then we're adding the side, the side skirts there and then we're starting on the turret which is fairly simple, no interior which you're not going to really need anyhow be interesting to see if somebody would do a chieftain with uh, interior wouldn't it, be nice again it's all upper, all upper turret stuff again and the smoke launchers um, all that kind of stuff, a big um, viewing telescope port, we you want to call them I'm going to use the armoured glass again, it looks nice, I really like that colour, it worked well bits and bobs onto the side of the hull, sorry side of the turret and again we're doing the big searchlight now again let's be carefully done, it'll be all painted before the lens goes in although you can cover it up if you want to, but I think I'll probably leave it open so yeah, it gives you the option of it closed or open so infrared no infrared and white searchlight assembly yeah yeah we can have it open or closed which is nice you can have it uh, done and obviously adding that to the side of the turret there we are there we are and then the turret and some other little bits and pieces on the turret looks like uh, most per periscopes and that little part that I thought was for the aerial probably is and again hatches, we start with the hatches and these are all the same again all nicely detailed, gives you the colour for the inside if you want to paint the inside if you're going to do that uh, adding the uh, wheel there without the wire what about uh, I think I don't know what it was for, I'm not 100% sure but I know it was all covered in, it was cabling I don't understand what that was for and then we're building some more storage boxes and then we're starting on the commander's cupola again it looks quite involved it looks quite involved there, so yeah. Yeah, it does. Quite a bit of a build on that. Interesting to do when it's done. 
And then we're doing putting the commander's cupola together and looks like the uh, lotus hatch again more plastic on the uh, clear plastic on top of the uh, commander's cup cupola and another searchlight there again excuse me and again that's obviously attached to the upper so the silver turret and then we're starting on the rear which you've got uh, some little bits and pieces on the rear of the turret big storage box on the back or whatever it is on the back and then we've got the uh, basket which is built up we've got PE there as well as well as the plastic again looks nice doesn't look too over complicated which is nice to see and then we're building the AA machine gun which sits on the top on the commander's cupola as normal again it looks nicely detailed and never looked at the actual machine gun did we and it's got some decals for the actual ammunition as well which is a nice touch by Meng obviously adding the uh, gun to the commander's hatch uh, we then we start to add the basket onto the rear and then a small basket to the side and then we start on the main barrel attaching that together I usually if I do this I'll build this up first and leave it to you know go off quite a while before I start messing around with it tend to do that and then we have a sprue map I think that's a complete build sorry and then we have a sprue map of all the parts included including the decals which is nicely all done again and then we have the two colour call outs we have the armoured squadron Berlin Infantry Brigade British Army West Germany 1989 so you know it's 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 got about 30 odd years now isn't it, since it was there so it's you know and it still looks a modern vehicle you know it really does and then we have the second one armoured unit British Army exercise fighting herald West Germany 1988 with a greener camouflage which is I think it's basically the same as the one on the Tamiya kit that I've got that's sitting there looking at me saying playing fit please finish me and then we have the colour paints you know we've got uh, Meng AK and I can never pronounce it Mr Colour that's what it is I think we need black, white, matte red, sky grey, transparent red, transparent blue, transparent orange, rubber black, khaki, deep green, black grey, British khaki, light olive, brown clay, silver, gunmetal and burnt red. Some of them I haven't got so I'll have to, uh, I'll go through my paints and see what we've got. So yeah, so that's the uh, the Meng Chieftain Mark 10 and I have to say I'm impressed. You get a lot of plastic in there and the build doesn't look too overly complicated he says we get it done but I think this is going to be one for next year uh, probably early next maybe maybe March time something like that I'd like to build this I think Paul's one I think Paul's got the tack on one so we'll probably build that together yeah impressed very impressed so that's the first unboxing done and we'll have a few more in the next few days I say with most of them being the girodesign.com the, the dioramas the new stuff that have uh, that's just come out recently and the quality is excellent so thank you very much for viewing and thank you very much for all my new subscribers new and old it's I say we're uh, heading towards the 3k which I never ever thought that would be uh, achievable we're getting there and I say I'm working on it at the moment I'm still working on the uh, the Russian pre-dreadnought uh, it's come along nicely and getting there uh, bits and pieces a lot of sub builds and then painted and then attached so it's just taking a bit of bit of building bit build wise is totally different to building a uh, armored vehicle right so again thanks for popping in and viewing and we'll catch you very soon with another unboxing like I say of the Giro design stuff so keep watching Greg signing off and we'll catch you very soon.